change your heart, change your life, change the planet. Hey everybody, it's Tim Van Orden coming to you from the Black Snake of Southern Vermont. This is the Green Mountain Power Aqueduct that drains out of Somerset Reservoir and goes quite a few miles to the town of Wilmington, Vermont, where it ends up in a power station. And all along the length of this pipe is a beautiful trail that you can run or mountain bike on. So that's what I'm doing today. And as I'm going along, I keep seeing all these little spurts coming out of the pipe, like that one right there. The water is under high pressure as it moves through this pipe because it's got to go up and down hills. So there's a pump house at the beginning that makes sure that the water arrives at the power station under a certain amount of pressure. So this gets me thinking about the heart and cardiovascular health. This is like a giant artery moving fluid, just like the veins and arteries in our body. And we've been led to believe that the best way to keep our blood flowing smoothly through our arteries without those little spurts is to eat a plant-based diet and to exercise. And making changes to your diet and your level of exercise can indeed improve cardiovascular health, but it's not the complete picture. So today I want to talk about the underlying factors that are at the very root of cardiovascular disease. Not the factors that add to the problem, like an improper diet or lack of sufficient exercise, but the factors that cause the very initiation of atherosclerosis. And we're going to use this giant artery right here as an example. The engineers that designed this aqueduct knew that if it had sharp corners, the water would pound into those corners under pressure and erode the material that the conduit is made out of. So they did a really good job of making really gentle corners like the one you see behind me so that the water isn't pounding into the corners and creating erosion. The same thing happens in our body with our blood vessels. When we're in a natural standing, walking, or running posture, our blood vessels are much like this aqueduct. The corners are rather smooth and the blood doesn't have a lot of smashing into the sides, even under pressure. But the moment we sit down, we put our hips at a 90 degree angle, we put our knees at a 90 degree angle, and there's some major blood vessels moving through our legs. There's a lot of blood coming up and down out of the legs. Big muscles in there. So not only do we put kinks in them, causing the blood to smash into the side as it tries to round the corner, but we also put our body weight on them. We sit down, we put them under great load and pressure. So we've kinked the blood vessels in our legs and then we've increased the pressure. So not only is the blood hitting the sides as it tries to make the corners, but it's doing so under greater pressure, which causes erosion of the endothelial lining. So when you add it up, you've been sitting for most of the day for most of your life. And even though the erosion that takes place is not on a massive scale, over the course of decades, it adds up. And when you erode that endothelial lining, you create little spaces, you create gaps. And then your improper diet can cause things to stick in those holes. So diet is not the initial problem. The initial problem is that you're not moving your body, but it gets even worse. Because we've been sitting for so long, for so much of our life, when we get up out of our chair to go exercise, those blood vessels don't just bounce back to the standing position. Because they've now adapted to be in a seated position most of the time. So they don't straighten out anymore. So when you're out there huffing and puffing and exercising, you're moving a lot of blood really quickly under a great deal of pressure, but the kinks are not entirely there, but they're still mostly there. Our blood vessels are still in a mostly seated position. They have lost their elasticity from too much sitting. So now we go out and we open the floodgates and we pour that blood through under great pressure and this is why people often drop dead from exercise. They go from sitting to pumping massive amounts of blood, but their blood vessels are like, wait a minute, we're not adapted to this anymore. So whenever you're starting an exercise program, do so gently. Experience lots of movements. Go through a full range. Don't make it hard. I know the high intensity interval training programs are really, really popular because they burn fat and they increase metabolism. And that's all that people focus on. But when you look at the damage they cause to blood vessels, you really want to stay away from these guys. So think about this. 
It's not just your diet. That's an afterthought. If you've already got the damage and erosion to your blood vessels, yes, diet is problematic. But if you're moving your body properly, if you're not sitting all the time, if you're moving every muscle through a full range of motion, you're not going to get these kinks and knots in the blood vessels. And then when you do exercise, the blood is going to be moving through smoother pipes like this one here. So move your body all day long as much as possible. It doesn't have to be exercise. Just move. Get up and move. All right? I love you guys. See ya. I can't deal with it now, I can't deal with it today, but I'll do it someday. I'll exercise next week. I'll get the gym membership right now. I'll go down there, I'll sign the contract, I'll get the membership, but I'll let my future self, the better version of me, a more competent version of me that has more willpower, more determination, more diligence, I'll let them deal with it. Mm -hmm.